March 1991 and the Five Nations Grand Slam decider produced arguably the greatest encounter between England and France at Twickenham. Having squandered chances to win the competition in 89 and 90, England were poised to win their first Grand Slam in 11 years. France's brilliant back line, with Serge Blanco taking his final bow in the competition, produced one of the game's most revered tries. A capacity 61,000 anxious but excited fans watch Jeff Cook's England side confront France. A chance to make it 6-0. He's missed it. Blanco on the counter-attack. This is typical adventure. Philippe Sella. And notice how the backs anticipate this great interplay to Cumberabero. Unsettling England and Cumberabero's recovered. It sees the man galloping up. It's Saint-André. It depends on the bounce and he's under the post. One of the most sensational tries Twickenham's ever seen from behind his own line. We talk about Blanco Flair. But that's just out of this world. What sheer innovative brilliance by France. And here we see Seller there. That, uh, but, but the important man into the pitch is Cabrera. Look at him here. That he beats them on the outside. He chips over time, chips over the defender, regathers it. But he's aware all the time of the men coming up in support. And Saint-André there, all he has to do is gather it. But what tremendous play by the French there. They turned defence straight into attack there with a try under the post by Saint-André. Richards, Teague, had to stretch for it, but did well. Straightened and burst, two tackles on the way. England again. Carling, Andrew, misses out Gusket straight to Hodgkinson. Rory Underwood round the outside. He's skated home, it's Rory Underwood. He's done it again. Try number 27. What a way to mark your record equaling England appearance. And it looks as though the line's a little bit flat at this stage, but it's tremendous work by Underwood. Look how he leaves Lafond on the outside. Really, Lafond will be a little bit disappointed there that he didn't make a better tackle, but Underwood showed great strength in getting outside him for that well-deserved try. The gap then stays, it's nine points in England's favour. A quarter of an hour gone of the second half. Verbizier, Cambrabero, Menel, Xavier Blanc to Sela. Off goes Morocco. Session setting it up. Cambrabero looking for a little chip. Pressure on England in defence, it's anyone's ball and Cambrabero follows through. And that leaves the game open again. Two minutes and any injury time remain. 21 points to 13. La Fonde under pressure. And it really has been a case of England's pack and half-backs keeping that pressure on throughout. France try everything in desperation now. Xavier Blond, Cambrabero. No way past Rob Andrew then. Dean Richards is still on the deck, and France come again. Saint-André, like an eel, held by Hesler. Barbizier to Sella, Cambalabello, still men in support, Blanco inside, and now it's Menel, Menel against Hill, Menel for the corner, still Menel, what a score by France! They're never beaten till the final whistle goes. And that was everything about Gallic flair. England significantly keep France pinned down in their own half. No ball emerging. That is the Grand Slam moment for England. The build-up that began really three years ago in triumph against Australia in 1988. A spectacular victory for England, winning their first Grand Slam since 1980 and setting the tone for the Rugby World Cup later that year when England beat France again in Paris. Before the game, Serge Blanco had called for a celebration of European rugby and Philippe Saint-André's legendary try delivered just that.